Welcome to the Keep Going Podcast. We got a special treat for y'all today. We got Corey Lewis in the house coming in. How we living? Great, man. Blessed. Extremely well, blessed. Um, so good to have you here, man. Thank you for having me. And you're looking good, too. Looking stiffy. <laughs> Pulled up. Real nice. Came with all your stuff. Representing the Warrior brand. Um, Absolutely. So, just for everybody, tell them a quick story about how you started, how did Warrior come about, and just take it from there. Absolutely. So, uh, my name is Corey Lewis, and I'm the founder of Warrior Beverages. Uh, right in front of us, you have Warrior Energy Drink Zero Sugar, Warrior Alkaline Water, and uh, Warrior Zero Sugar. And yeah. this this business, this idea, actually started uh, back in 2020 um, during, COVID, COVID. during the COVID okay. times. And um, I actually got laid off uh, from my job. I was working as a sales manager. Okay. I got laid off. Wait, were you in the CPG industry or like? What? Not at all. Not oh, at all. Really? At, at this time, you know, four years ago, you know, I was just into sales. I really love, you know, selling products and all kinds right. of, of just different products. So um, I was working as a sales manager. I got laid off. Yeah. And I accepted a job at the Newport Beach Marriott. Oh, local here. Okay. As a security guard, just yeah. working graveyard just to kind of like make some extra money on the side, right. provide for my family, did Lyft, did Uber, did all kinds of hustles, right? You're a hustler. I'm a hustler straight up, you know? And so I did that. And, and while I, you know, I did, I got this job right after I got laid off. I'm like, I got to feed the fam, right? So I yeah. just go ahead and get this job. So I got the job and um, I'm, I'm sitting in a break room at, at 1 a.m., and I start drinking every single night. I start consuming energy drinks yeah. just to stay up, keep working, right. keep going, keep grinding. And I'm um, drinking the Red Bull, the Monster, the Bang, anything that was in the vending machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at 1 a.m., inspiration hit me and says, you like drinking energy drinks so much. Why not try to make your own? That's right. healthier. That's better for people. And so the only thing around me at that time was, was a napkin. And I, I grabbed a napkin and a pen, and I drew this W logo on that napkin. This and logo. That logo right there. And I called it Warrior Energy Drink. Wow. And at that time, you know, I knew nothing about how to make a drink, you know, what steps to take, anything. You know, I probably had like $600 to my name at that time. Right. And I put all of that whole $600 in learning. And um, I, I first started on YouTube University. I, I hey, literally... There. Anybody that's starting right now, that's one that's one takeaway right away. Absolutely. YouTube University. That's Absolutely. where you should start. Google, Absolutely. YouTube, same thing, right? Absolutely. Go and ahead. Go ahead. I, I typed in, literally typed in how to make an energy drink into YouTube. Right. And I probably got a thousand videos of different people talking right. about you need to hire a beverage scientist. You need to find the right co-packer. You need to find investors. You should have at least a million dollars. And I probably watched a thousand hours of how to do this. And it took me six months to really figure it out. And within six months, I had this first can in my hand. Right. And I had it made. I had it shipped to my house. I had five cases. All I could afford to make, which is extremely expensive if you've ever tried to make your own beverage. But imagine those five cases, you know, costing everything I had. Right. But I had five cases. Yeah, you had so five. So I, I knew that after doing all the R&D and the research... And so I, I took those five cases to a local 7-Eleven in my neighborhood, and I walked in and I said, hey, is the owner here? Can I speak to the owner yeah. of the 7-Eleven? Uh, what I learned is that each 7-Eleven, they will allow you, um, actually, each 7-Eleven has a 15% allocation of whatever they want to sell, they can sell it. Right. So if you're making gummy bears, if you're making potato chips, all you got to do is talk to the owner because each 7-Eleven is franchise owned. Right. And so all you got to do is, is really just talk to them. And I showed him my product. I said, hey, I got five cases of Warrior Energy Drink. And he took he took the can and he put it he put it up right next to a Red Bull in his cooler. Yeah. And he said, I'll buy all five cases. From wow. Me. And Congrats. that was an amazing feeling. Exactly. And I was like, what? And I said to the owner, his name is Nick, still yeah. talk to him to this day. I said, but Nick, you didn't even taste it. I said, you want to buy all five cases? You, you don't even know what it right, tastes right, like. Right. He said, let me teach you something. He says, it doesn't matter what it tastes like. It matters first what it looks like. Yeah. He goes, and with the product that looks this good, he goes, I would put this up against Red Bull right now. 
Wow. And, and he did. He, he took the five cases, put them up in the cooler right next to Red Bull. He said, now we wait. He goes, now we wait. He goes, let the customers come in. Let it see it next to Red Bull. If they pull it and it sells, I'll buy your next five cases and right. the next five cases and the next five cases. And that's how I started getting into 7-Eleven. Wow. That's how you got in. That's how I got in. From an idea at 1 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. But oh, I wanted to ask a question. How did you come up with the actual name? So the actual name Warrior itself is, is it's kind of based on my family. So half of my family um, is African-American. Yeah. The other part of my family is Polynesian. Okay. So more specifically Samoan and Hawaiian. And so spending time with them and just understanding the culture, you know, I said, you know, what better name could it be that represents a family culture and that's why our tagline is actually fueled by culture it's because oh. it's the culture behind the brand that it's is literally actually... on your license plate yes <laughs> I, saw, I saw it i was like that's Corey. i knew i didn't even know what you were driving but then you pulled up i was like oh that's him right there <laughs> yeah it's on my license plate it says <laughs> my license plate actually says war energy and then it says fueled by culture underneath it Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> Wait, so there's Hawaiian in there. And then I'm looking at this logo. Wait, have you reached out to uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson yet? Have you reached out to him? No, but I, I have a, I have a very strong feeling that he knows about our brand very, very well. Very, very know. well. He knows about it. Yeah. And, and the reason why I say that is because um, some people that worked with me in the past also work with him as well. Oh, really? And right before we dropped... Warrior, he dropped Zoa. Same no time way. frame, same year. It's very, very. It's a. It's kind of an interesting story, but yeah, he yeah. knows. He knows about us. My gosh. Well, no, I gotta go back because, like, I know you're a hustler. The moment I met you, I'm like, I believe in Corey so much. I think he's gonna make. <laughs> no, he's just gonna keep going. He literally hustles. You heard the story. He was an Uber, Lyft, trying to make it for his family, doing security. Then the inspiration behind the brand, and then from there, like. I remember meeting you. Did I meet you when you had the first can? Was that the first? Yes. You actually met me in the city of Cerritos, and I was working a pop-up event for the city of Cerritos, and you just kind of, you came up to the, to the 10, 10 by 10 booth, and you said, hey, you know, are yeah, you guys yeah. giving out samples? I said, oh, yes, we are. And I gave you oh. a sample can, and you tried it, and that's see, that's no. how our relationship it started. It was history. <laughs> now I'm officially fueled by culture. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, no. I, I remember that moment, actually. So, no, it's cool to see how far you've came. And then, you know, so let's go back to your story a little bit. You started the brand. Like, what was the first biggest, what was the number one struggle you started with right away? Because you, you didn't know exactly what to do after YouTube. Like, what was the number one struggle after that? Like, you figured out a couple things and then. Number one struggle was finding a co-packer. A co finding someone who could actually make it with, with using my vision. That was the first struggle was finding that co-packer. Once I found the co-packer, the second thing was finding a designer yeah. who could actually design the can exactly how you want it to right. look. And so what I used to do is I used to carry a sketch pad yeah. and I still do. I, I, everything that's on the can was hand drawn oh, by yeah. me first. Wow. And then I took that to a graphic designer and I said, can you make this? Yeah. And he looked at it, he goes, yeah, I can do it. And he started doing like sample ideas. So the first struggle was finding a co-packer that could actually, you know, produce the drink. Right. The second thing for me was really locking in that designer right. who could actually make the can look the way you want it to look. Oh my gosh. And then you found them. Mm -hmm. and then after that, it's a vault. So this is a vault. Like what stage is this at now? Like cause you've had how many, I don't know, designs or... Oh, this is, this is definitely final. This is finalized yeah. product that you see right now. We've been in business now for four years. Right. And we're sold in over 23 states, you know, in America. And the way people buy our product is right now, it's off of two ways. Warriorbeverages.com, which is our website. We right. sell nationwide as well as off of Amazon. So people have, have, have purchased, um, you know, all over the country. Right. Mm -hmm. so are you doing... So when you were first started, you were doing pop-ups. Mm -hmm. Were you doing that 7-Eleven? So you got that in-person sale. Mm -hmm. And then from there, when did you take it to online? Like, when did you... Did, was that right away or did Right you, away. Oh, right you away. did? Yeah. I How'd think you know to do that right away? Just because of looking where we are in the world and looking how Amazon pretty much runs everything. It's like, we have to be online. We have to have... I probably built the website, you know, even before I got it into a physical store. Just because I knew if I have a website... 
people from all over the world can see the product, right? right. So the website is like number one. It's like right. it's like up there. And so what we did was we said, you know what? I, I made a promise to 7-Eleven and I made a promise to Nick. I said, if you buy our product, I promise you that I will sell it out of your store every single time so much that people will come in here and they won't see it. They won't yeah. be able to find it. You have. And we have. And so every time somebody says, well, I don't see it in 7-Eleven, I said, it's sold. It's gone. I said, you can't find it because what we do with every 7-Eleven activation, and this is this is another thing that a lot of brands don't do anymore, your, your, your Red Bulls, your, your Monsters, it's because they're too big, right? But what we do is every time we activate a 7-Eleven, we do a pop-up event on oh, the really? weekend in front of that 7-Eleven. So we got you know our team, our sales guys, sales yeah. girls, pop up, pouring samples of the drink, like, hey, our nice. drink is in there. You know, buy it, check it out, right? right? And so that draws a person to say, okay, well, I'll buy five, I'll buy six, I'll buy whatever, and it makes sure that the drink sells out every time. So you, did you start doing that right away with the right first away. store? The first that first store when That's Nick when Nick bought it, yeah. I said, hey, how fast can we do a pop up? He yeah. goes, you can do a pop up whenever you want. Yeah, I said, okay, tomorrow. He goes, are you serious? I said, tomorrow. <laughs> because by that time, I already built the pop-up tent. I already right. had the custom linen made for the table. I was prepared for anything. And preparation is key because you, if you're going to really do this, you got to kind of have all your ducks in a row. Right. And so that very next day, I had my pop-up. I had me, my daughter, my other right. guy was out there. Yeah. We were all out there like pouring samples. The first day, we sold those five cases. Oh, and wow. I went back to Nick and I said, hey... Uh, we made you your money back. <laughs> and, you know, would you be interested in buying another five right. cases? He said, I'll take 15 cases. Oh, nice. So it kind of just, it, that, that's kind of. Snowball kinda, effect. Yeah, that's, we, yeah. we proved ourselves. Yeah. If, if we moved those five cases out of his store and he was like, every time I'll just keep buying 15 cases. Next time I'll buy 20 cases. Next what, time I'll buy. When you said you've proved yourselves, like how many times have you told yourself that you need to prove yourself or are you just that confident Hey, I'm just gonna keep going. Good things will happen. Or like, what's your mindset when when you're building this company? That is never good enough, it's and that I'm never happy with the design, and that I'm never satisfied with it. I'm I'm happy. Don't get me wrong. I am happy with how this looks. Yeah. And I'm happy with how this looks, but I'm gonna make revisions even to this bottle. Right. And I'm gonna develop that. I have a version two coming out of this this alkaline water, where that whole bottle looks different. I'm big on design. I love to create. I right. love to design. And I want to be able to make the product look its, look its absolute best. Yeah. Well, you know who talks about that as a, a lot is Ed Milet. Blissful dissatisfaction. <laughs> yeah. You, I he's don't know great. if you've ever heard that. He's great. But he talks about that. He's like, I appreciate where I'm at now, yes. but I have so much more to go. Yes. A lot of those guys do. The Andy Fasillas, the Jesse Isslers, but that's why Absolutely. they keep going and they make so much money. They make such a big impact with the companies they Absolutely. own and whatnot. So. That makes sense to me when you Absolutely. say never satisfied. Absolutely. But, you know, you're grateful. I'm for, grateful. Yeah, Don't yeah, get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, yeah. God has blessed me tremendously. Right. And, and you know, even when people doubt you. Right. Or people may not believe in your idea in the beginning. Do you have people like that? Oh, absolutely. Oof. Absolutely. And and I love my family. Yeah. But I, I kind of started this business without my wife's blessing. Yeah. You know, and that was something different because... You know, she was like, well, you kind of started Warrior without, you know, without even talking to me about right. it. And the reason why I did that was because it was my passion and I wanted to see how far I could really take it. You know, so I'm, I'm more or less like, let me do it and ask permission later. Right. Ask <laughs> or for, for ask forgiveness, for forgiveness yeah, later. You're saying. Saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's kind of like I just went and I just did it. But um, I'll never forget, you know, my, my brother, when I, was yeah. I love you, love you to death. But, uh, you know, when I first showed it to Baby him, brother or young, or older, older brother? brother, older brother. Okay, and, and, yeah. and it's that thing where, you know, your your family, your mom, your dad, your brother, they're always trying to protect you. They're always trying to put that protection yeah. on you, you know. But he told me I showed him the, my business plan for Warrior. And he was on the napkin. On the, not on the napkin. <laughs> not, on the, not on the napkin. But I had a I had a, a, a folder. I had a binder, okay, like yeah. a one inch binder. And I said, hey, man, this is my, my business plan. This is my idea. I just want to show it to you. And he was like, I don't know, bro. He's like, I don't know. Yeah. He's like, there's already a lot of energy drinks out there. Right. You know, you're going up against giants and blah, right. blah, blah. And my whole response to that was, is, well, when you walk into 
any store, how many types of gum are there? How many types of chips are there? How many types of sodas are there? Right. So there's always room for one more. Right. It's just it has to be strong enough. That right. branding, that logo has to be strong enough to really pull people. And like I tell like a lot of my friends that are athletes, all it takes is one scout, one person to recognize you. All it takes is All you is needed one. was that gentleman from the 7-Eleven. Absolutely. And, and that's how we got in there. Yeah, see? Yeah. See, there's a lesson right there. All you need is one person just one. that likes you. Just like, one to believe. Yeah. One yeah. To, other than yourself. Right, right. Because you got to believe more yeah. than anybody and For convince real. others to believe in you as well. Right. Yeah. And like, well, I was talking about this on the last podcast. You put in so much work behind it. The work does instill the worth. So you feel worthy that you're going to accomplish bigger and better things too. So it's Absolutely. like, Absolutely. Um, I have a question about like the brand itself now. Like you have affiliate partners. Absolutely. And, like you're growing, you're marketing. Like, like Absolutely. what's the evolution of that? You started in the 7-Eleven. Now you're partnering with so many companies and big teams and sport. Like, go ahead. Tell Absolutely. the people who you're partnering with. Absolutely. So our co-owner now, ever since March of this year is AC Green, the Iron nice. Man. NBA three-time champion from the Los Angeles Lakers. Good. Um, so he is now co-owner of, of Warrior Beverages. Um, that has segued into a relationship with the Los Angeles Lakers. Sweetness. And so I, that's my, my most favorite team, <laughs> basketball. I'm a huge basketball fan. I'm a huge, you know, Shaq and Kobe and Magic and Kareem yeah. and AC Green and all of these guys. I'm a huge Laker fan my entire life. Sweet. So to be a part of that organization now... And, and being a part of that is a, is a true blessing. And uh, we, we actually, last week, we just signed on to the 24-25 Lakers season. We Warrior is now on the official yearbook. Ooh, we are on the entire back nice. cover of the yearbook. Yeah. So when people walk in, they're going to print like a million copies of it. Right. So when people walk into Crypto Arena this season, they're going to get handed a yearbook. Yeah. What do they do? They look at the front. They look at the back. Exactly. When they look at the back, they're going to see... All warrior on the back of that yeah. year, but so yeah, we've partnered with 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 the Lakers. Wait, we've, how did you get there? How did you like? What, there's got to be like a story. Like you don't just randomly, hey, I partnered. With, you know what I'm saying? There is. There's got to be a little something there. So Absolutely. I want to know. Tell the people like I want to know how they how this happened. So so it all goes back to work, and I'm gonna keep saying the word You're a hustler. Work. I'm going to keep saying work because it turns out that I was... Does this W stand for warrior and work? I guess it does. <laughs> I, guess, I, I, could, I guess I could have made work energy drink because <laughs> it probably would have had the same effect. But um, I was actually working um, at the UCLA Health okay. training facility uh, over a year ago. And I see... Um, and this is... By the way, this is where the Lakers train. This is where okay. they train their bodies. Way to give people this is, contact. This, yeah, is, yeah. this is where they practice. This is in El Segundo at the UCLA Health Training Facility. Correct. Yeah. I see AC Green there one day, just kind of randomly walking out to his car, right? And so I stopped him. Yeah. And I said, hey, Mr. Green, um, my name's Corey. Um, if someone wanted to pitch a business idea to you, how would they do so? He said, Hey, well, do you have a business card? I had one. I had one business card just happened to be in my back right pocket. Sweet. Pulled it out, gave it to him. He's like, oh, you make energy drinks and alkaline water. I said, yeah, I've been in business about three, three and a half years. I'm looking for partners, looking for spokespeople, looking for investors. I'm looking for everything. Yeah. He goes, okay. He goes, well, meet me back here, same day, same time, and bring me some drinks. I'd like to try it. Right. Perfect. And this was on like a Wednesday. Right. Next Wednesday rolls around. I'm there. He's there. I had him the drinks. Didn't hear anything for two weeks. Heard nothing. I'm thinking, okay, he hated it. <laughs> it's it's over. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to partner with him. Right. I'm literally sitting on my couch at midnight and my phone rings and it says, AC Green calling. <laughs> I'm like, what? I answer the phone. I'm like, hi, this is Corey. He's like, is now a good time to talk? And I'm like halfway asleep. This is when couch. the magic happens for you. I'm, it's Midnight, nighttime. 1 a.m. It's nighttime. <laughs> That's what I've learned. And so I'm like, I'm like sleeping on the couch, not, you know, about to go to sleep. Right. He's like, is now a good time to talk about your drink? I hopped up. It's the perfect time. It's the perfect <laughs> time. How's it going? He goes, let's meet up tomorrow. Let's meet up tomorrow at this, this hotel and we'll talk about your drink. And I'd like to partner with you. Wow. And that was, that was in March of this year. How did that feel? I cried. Yeah. 
That's why I'm wearing glasses right now. <laughs> so you can't see what's really going on. Oh yeah, oh, uh, uh, behind my eyes, man. Because it's it's been nothing but a blessed year, and I'm truly grateful for everything. You're right. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That's gotta feel like incredible. Yeah, it, yeah. it is. It's truly incredible. And it, like now, you look at some of your family or friends that you're like, ah, oh, you know, we don't really know. Are they more supportive now, or is it like? <laughs> Has it shifted, or is there still ways to go? Like it's it's all shifted a hundred percent. AC Green has been in my house more times than I can count. My <laughs> wife has met him. My my dad has. Your wife met is him. jealous of AC Green because he spends more time with you now. Yeah, she talk. He talks <laughs> more on the phone with me than she does for sure every single day. Um, my kids, you know, know him as Uncle AC now. Oh, it's like wow. my nieces have all met him. Like they've taken pictures with him. They spent time with him. You know, all he, because you walked up to him in a, in a parking in a, in lot, in a random parking lot time, and he was just walking out to his car. He was going home. See, know? people live so small; they need to go up and make. What does JJ Watt says? It says, uh, "Dream big, but work hard." Oh yeah, you need to go do that. That's yeah. part of the working hard. Yeah. So, like, if you think about it, I, I would just tie this whole life and this whole company, everything, like you said, into work, because when I was working. I drew the logo. When I was working, I met AC Green. Right. So it's kind of like it all ties back into are you working on it? Are you working yeah. on it? If you're working on it, it, the universe will bring it to you. And I'm big on just manifesting your dreams and just really working towards what it is that you want to want to bring to the world. Right. But you just got to – I work 18 hours a day. Wow. I work 18 hours. When I really look at my life and where I'm at every single day, seven days a week – I don't stop talking to people on my phone until 3 a.m. Yeah. 3 a.m. is kind of like that that cutoff yeah. time. Go to sleep for four hours. I yeah. wake up. I do the exact same thing every single day over and right. over again. Wow. Well, with that being said, you're always working. How do you how do you find the time to spend with family then too? Because you got kids. You know, you got a wife. Like yeah. other people in your life. You yeah. Know? I got three daughters. 16, 14, 11, and a wife who all need attention too. So I block out time. So when I get home in the evening, yeah, the first thing I do is I sit down in the living room. You know, dinner is probably already on the table. Yeah. And I just talk to them. Your wife's a good them. cook? She has her dishes. She has, her, <laughs> she, has, she has certain things that she yeah. makes that only she can make. And she will not give out the recipe, oh, which nice. I really do appreciate because they're kind of like Polynesian right, right, dishes. Right. Oh, sweet. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that, you know. She can so you, do a mean curry soup as well. Oh, wow. So I like that. And she makes yeah. this shrimp soup that's very, very unique. She's got her dishes for She's sure. She's got her dishes for sure. So, and her cakes. She does like a pineapple coconut cake. Like oh, beef. wow. Islander. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she she she, she does it. But, oh, um, sweet. But, uh, no, I block out time. And I, I've been doing it even more so recent recently. Yeah. Um, just, for, you know. Taking some advice from Dave Meltzer, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, with him, how he blocks out his time for certain things. And um, no, I make sure I ask them about their day, how school, you know, what have they failed at? That's something that I've started to ask them every single day now is like, did you fail at something today? Yeah. And if they say no, I'm like, well, maybe you didn't try. Yeah. Enough. That's, you know? that's the takeaway. Like, maybe you weren't trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it. People go through life. They go through the motions of life. So Absolutely. So that's good that you check in <laughs> with your kids about that. Absolutely. Um, so you spend time with your family. You have that time blocked out. Then you're working on your business. What do you do for yourself? Is there something that keeps you like in, in Corey mode, Zen mode? Or like, what do you do for yourself? Work out. You yeah. know, whenever I can. Um, so many W's. Yeah. <laughs> so, work out, work wife. Out. <laughs> like, yeah, man. Whenever I can. I like to, you? you know, do some cardio stuff and. Yeah, you know, just just hang out, man. Just hang out with the fam whenever I whenever I can. I mean, I'm, I'm a simple guy. I don't I don't need a lot of lot of things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, seriously, that's good. Working out, that's a great takeaway. Everybody should work out, um, because your whole life should be centered around health and wellness. Absolutely, other things as well. But you want to provide for your family, you need to be healthy. You want to provide for your business partners, you need to be healthy, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So absolutely. Um, on top of that, so. You got your story. You shared some of that. Thank you so much. Then you shared some of the things with your family. That's awesome. Now you're building this brand into something bigger. Like, what are the next steps for Warrior? Like, Absolutely. So right now, we are our partner with Langer's Juice International. Yeah. Um, if you know anything about Langer's Juice, they've been in business since 1960. 
Um, they are, you know, pulling in somewhere between three and four hundred million dollars per year annually. Yeah. Um, they want to start manufacturing Warrior for us, so oh, it pl- kind of takes it out of my hands. Yeah, puts it in theirs. They're in the city of industry. Uh, we we work with Bruce Langer, who is yeah. Mr. Langer himself. Yes, and uh, he fell in love with the brand about he fell in love with the brand in May of this year. Yeah, and since then we've we've done tours. You had a good spring. Yeah, very very <laughs> good, a phenomenal one, and we've 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 partnered with Langer's Juice International, who's going to be producing it for us now. Um, just the energy, not the water. We're doing something different with the water. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to that because that is going to you know probably. We're estimating right now about three thousand plus new stores. So like your your Costco's, your Trader Joe's, your Whole Foods. Yeah. Um, being able to get the brand just really, really spread in a bunch of stores yeah. nationwide. And we have our main man AC Green as, right. as our main spokesperson. So he loves to sign autographs on the <laughs> bottles and all that kind of stuff for the people. Um, we just actually did this this past weekend. We did the Huntington Beach Air Show. Or, oh, yeah. Or, I'm sorry. We're talking about that. I'm sorry. It's called the Pacific Air Show. Yeah. Um, in the city of Huntington Beach. Okay. And uh, we were there for all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, Friday was cool because the sky was clear. You could see the fighter jets. On Saturday and Sunday, though, the marine layer and the fog decided right. to kick in. And we could hear the jets above us, but we couldn't see them. So a lot of people were like, ah, so they promised to give people tickets again for it next year. But we did really well. AC Green was there. Yeah. He was signing autographs like crazy. I know his wrist must hurt. (laughs) He was gone like it. But everybody loves taking pictures with him, sign autographs. And we did really well. We we sold a lot of product. We sold hats. We sold T-shirts. I mean, we we did really, really well. I would say it was probably our biggest and best event out of all the events we've done. Yeah. Over the past four years. Wow. I would say this, the Pacific Air Show has been number one. Sweetness. For us. Wow. So that's a great show to go to. It sounds like, um, you know, the theme of the show, the Keep Going podcast, for those people, those viewers watching this, like what's something that you would tell them to keep going? Like what, what is it? Some people are, you know, they have anxiety, they have depression, they're, they're, they went through a break, they go through mm-hmm. all these things in life. You've been through a lot of things, right? All of it. All so of it. what's something like a lesson that you tell somebody to keep going? Absolutely. I would say, number one, have confidence in yourself. Um, huge takeaway. Have confidence in your product, even when others don't see your vision. And that's okay. Yeah. They're not supposed to see your vision. Your vision is yours. It's for you. And so understand that first. And Your underst- vision is for you. Your vision is for you, and it's yours alone, and it's a yeah. personal journey. But it's up to you to instill your belief and your brand and your your character into others so they believe also. Yeah. You got to get some buy-in, but you don't need everyone's buy-in. Right. You need your buy-in. You need your buy-in. First. Yeah. And so definitely understand the vision is yours and it's yours alone. And number two, ignore, ignore the haters. Yeah. Because they will come out. Block them out with your shades. Block them out with your shades. <laughs> block the tears. <laughs> and and just, you know, just ignore those who, who try to bring you down or try to, you know, because because they can't understand your vision. They don't understand. They don't, they don't get understand. it. Some people just don't get it. That's when you cancel them out yeah. of your life. Yep. Yeah. Always be networking. Always be networking. Always be networking. That's, that's a huge one because... Write this stuff down because... You're learning from a, an entrepreneur that's been through it. Like he's had great partners. He's built a company. Absolutely. He's gonna keep building. Like write mm-hmm. some of this down. Apply it to your life. So always be networking. Always be networking, and just be open to new ideas as well. You know, people are gonna throw things at you. Take the good. Throw away the bad. Um, you know, and always be consistent. I truly believe the reason that I have what I have and the reason we are where we are today for both of us yeah, yeah. is because we are consistent in our passions of what it is that we want to do. Right. And as long as you never quit, you never stop, eventually, eventually it'll happen for you. Right. It will. Because you've been working, you've been driving towards, it's like, you know, you're going home and now you're on the freeway. Eventually, you're going to get home. Right. But if you stop along the journey, you'll never make it. Right. So it's just stay consistent. And I've seen so many people say, oh, I want to start a flower shop. Oh, I want to start a car dealership. Oh, I want to. I'm like, great. 
I'm the first person to say, great, do it. How are you going to do it? Right. Have you written it down? Do you have a plan? You know, for me, it always started with writing that idea down. Once you write it down, it starts to materialize. Right. Until you write it down, it's just a thought in your head. Writing it down is the thought in your head connecting to your fingertips, and now you're putting it on paper. And once it's on paper, that logo is now a real thing. That's some real, like, that's real shit. Like, people don't understand that. Absolutely. That's- it's real. But you gotta, like, you gotta write it out. I tell, I even tell my kids, I'm like, oh, what's your plan for, you know, you want that, let's say, new bike. Okay. Right. Okay. I can easily give you the money. We can go buy it. But if you wanted to buy it, what's your plan? How would yeah. you get it? What would you do? Wow. Write it down. I give them sketch pads. I'm like, write it down. What, right. what, what's, your, what's your plan? How are you going to get there? Oh, if I do this, well, you know, I thought about starting a lemonade stand. And if I did this and I didn't, I charge this per cup. Right. Now they're starting to think about it. Right. Their own ways of kind of being like mini entrepreneurs. Right. Making money and things like that. Yes. So. I can't tell if that's an entrepreneur tip or a parenting tip or so I, I, <laughs> a little I, bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when, you, when your dad is an entrepreneur, then that's how you parent. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's that's incredible. I guess for any of the viewers at home, like what's the number one takeaway that you would share with them mm-hmm. if they're going to start something besides writing it down? If they were going to start something for themselves, what else would you tell them? Partner with people who believe in your vision. Yeah. Partner with a group of people. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It could be two people. It could be three people. Yeah. But if they believe in your brand and they and they want to to help scale, whether it's providing ideas, providing financing, investments, anything like that, I I would say have a small team. It yeah. doesn't you don't have to hire twenty people or a partner with twenty people. Two people is enough. Yeah. You know, after I started really getting into this thing, I had two guys with me. And yeah. those two guys, it was three of us. So those two guys, you know, have been with me to this day all the time just providing encouragement and insights and just help along the way sweet and then when you're having all this help how, how do you like you got to bring the right people into your life how do you vet them how do you make sure they're the right person is it an energy or is it like what they've done <laughs> in the past because you know sometimes you yeah. get screwed out of things oh i've been screwed several See? times i've been screwed a lot along the, <laughs> along, along no pun intended um <laughs> along the way by people who tried to take advantage of our brand yeah. Tried to just get money from us, and some have, some have. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we made certain investments that were bad and didn't quite work out, and we invested in some people that didn't quite work out, and that's fine. You know, or some people wanted to get things that they weren't deserving of. Yeah. You know, for example, if someone says, "Oh, I want this percentage of your company," I'm like, "Bro, I just met you, bro. Like, right. I'm not giving you that." Yeah. You know, or you haven't put in enough work to actually deserve something like that. So you really have to spend time with them. The only way you're going to vet these people is is spend time with them, but also see how they treat others. See how they treat their family. See how they treat their wife. See how they treat their kids. Why does that matter? Why does that matter? Because I don't do business with dicks. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. And I've had some of those around me. No dicks allowed. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And so the the truth of the matter is, is is I've watched certain individuals yeah. uh you know treat their wife bad or right. treat their kids in a certain way and I don't like that. I don't yeah. like that. Yeah. And so and I told them, you know, about that. Like that's not cool, right. man. Like that's not the culture that warrior is. You know, we want to have morals, integrity, pride. We want to have all of these good characteristics, you know, and I've had to cut many many people off because of right. those types of situations. Right. Wow. Uh that's it's sad to go through it, but like you sometimes you got to learn the hard way, I guess. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, do you have like any uh, mentors, coaches, or people that come in out of your life? Or I mean, I have so many. I mean, uh, from afar, or no, just oh. locally, just here oh, that I nice. can like pick up the phone and call or go to their house. It's a great thing. Um, you know, there's so many people. I mean, number one, AC Green, right? Yeah. Um, not only a mentor and business partner, but a what's friend. the number one lesson you learned from AC? Like, man, just be humble. Humble. This guy. Is, has been so successful in his life, in his career. But even though I've only known him a little while, I can tell this man has always been like this. He's always been humble, kind. He's always been kind. Yeah. Whenever I see him or do events with him, you know, somebody wants an autograph, someone wants a picture. He could be tired. He could be, you know, just 
done with the day and he will still stop and he will still sign that autograph. He will still smile and he will still take that picture. I love when people do that because you never know. You might save somebody's life that way. Maybe they're thinking of negative yeah. thoughts and they're going to go yep. do something they shouldn't have done. Yep. And that little autograph or saying hi or hello. Changed their yeah. life. Yeah, Changed exactly. their life forever. And so that's what I learned from him is stay yeah. humble, stay kind, always be there for your community. He actually, on November 13th, he will be receiving the Presidential Community Service Award wow. for over 35 years of community service. And I'm going to be there when he gets that U.S. Presidential Award at yeah. the Crypto.com Arena. Wow. And so this is huge. This is this is, is this is Joe Biden, yeah. you know, basically agreeing and saying A.C. Green deserves this presidential award. Wow, that is crazy. I mean, what, what what NBA player? Congrats, AC. Congrats, what, Warrior team. Like what it. what NBA player is getting that? I, I don't actually. I don't know. None of them. <laughs> none, it, that's how big it is. Like, wow. None of them. And so November thirteenth, you can watch. Be watching the Laker game. They're going to be playing the Memphis Grizzlies, and that's when he's going to get. Going to go down. That's when he's going to get it. And I'm going to oh be right gosh. there. I'm going to be right there. Wow. Just cheering and crying. Oh my gosh. With, your, with the shades on, yeah. <laughs> with the shades yeah. on, of course. Uh, so you're talking about success. You mentioned success like a minute or two ago. What what does success look like for you? Like, because some people think it's just financially. Some people just think it's being in shape. Some people think, you know, they have all these ideas. I want to know what it means to you. Like, what does that look like? Success to me is waking up and doing whatever it is you want to do with your life yeah. every single day. For me, that's what success is. When yeah. you can when you can wake up and spend time with your family, spend time with your friends and do whatever is in your heart that day, to me that's a successful person. Wow. To me it's not about the money that's in the account or anything like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's nice to have. Yeah. But that's not everything. Wow. That's a great lesson and takeaway. Uh, with that being said, the success journey, you've had a great one. So if people want to come support your success and join your community, how can they find you? What should they reach out to? Number one place is Instagram. Okay. At Warrior Beverages. They can check out our website, warriorbeverages.com. Um, yeah, that's that's the easiest way to reach okay. out to our team and, and talk to us and communicate. Uh, we also have an ambassador program. Sweet. We have over 176 warrior ambassadors nationwide. These are people who, who we pay. Yeah. Um, on a on a monthly and quarterly basis, um, that just promote the products online. You know, right. give everybody a, a discount code. They can they can support that way. They can you know share the code with their family and friends. They right. get a discount. Their family gets a discount. And then whenever anyone makes a purchase, they get fifteen percent commission off of whatever they buy. It doesn't matter the amount. They could buy a million cans and they would get fifteen percent off it. of that. So it doesn't matter. But that's at the Warrior easiest Beverages. Way. Yep, yep. Go to warriorbeverages.com. There's a okay. link that says become a ambassador. Yeah. And then they can they can become an ambassador. Okay, cool. Any any other tags or handles you want to drop, or is that pretty much it? That's the major one, brother. Yeah, That's yeah, the major yeah. one. Okay, sweetness. Well, we appreciate you coming down. Appreciate you having Shout me. out to everybody watching the Keep Going podcast. We got more athletes, entrepreneurs coming your way to share their story and their lessons inside the story. Stay blessed and have a beautiful day. Well, thanks, bro. Hey, I appreciate you, my brother. <laughs> Come on, hey, man. I appreciate you.